Welcome to the Better Together podcast, where we look for ways we can more effectively serve Jesus Christ as Free Will Baptist all around the world. Today we have with us Tyler Penn. He's both a North American ministries missionary and I am a missionary, the first of that kind, I believe, Tyler. So welcome to the Better Together podcast and tell us a bit, what is it that you do in this joint project with I am and NAM? Yeah, so I serve with I am as the international missionary to the foreign field of the state of Illinois. <laughs> and so we work not because of geography, but because of the people. You know, yes. We work with international students. So instead of going to China or to Japan or to Spain, uh, these students come here to study at the university. And then many of them come with very little knowledge of Christ. And so that's where we come and serve them. And, and our joint project part with North American Ministries is a church plant. And so we don't just want our family to be the only you know, group reaching out to these international students. We'd love to have multiple families and even a church kind of a, reaching the community that can then reach the student who will then go back and reach the world. That's our initiative. Wow. And so I'm under the I am part, and then yeah, well, the church planner will be under the Bridge Church is mm-hmm. the church that started, and they're with the North American Ministries part and Illinois Mission Board as the advisory board over that whole thing there. So. so we should say there are ministries at different universities to international students, yeah. but what's a little unique with your ministry is you're ministering to international students and you're trying to tie them directly in to this church there in uh, Champaign, Illinois. Correct. Yeah, we're wanting to have this church that is just the people who live and work and raise their families in that community like any other church. But, you know, where one church may have a big ministry to this, you know, homeless or the feeding of the people here, one of the big things of our church will be international students. It's a safe place for them to come, and then our families will have them over to their home for, you know, s'mores and mm-hmm. Thanksgiving, and just to have not just us, but a whole community of people loving and reaching out to these international students. Wow. And so... University of Illinois, Champaign, not a small school, 40-something no. thousand? Yeah, up there, upper 40s. Yeah. And about what percentage of those would be international students? About one in four. We were really close to that. So we have nearly 15,000 know, international students. Wow. Yeah. So as you think about what you're doing, mm-hmm. uh, you've got 15,000 folks around oh, yeah. there, yeah. and they're doing different programs some of them will stay four or five years, some of them one to two years and not even return home. Yeah, vast majority of our students are on like a two-year at the most. Every now and then we get the doctorate students who are there for four or five, mm-hmm. but many are just in a master's year-and-a-half program or just a, an exchange, and many are just really that six months, that fall semester or that spring semester. Yeah, we have such a blend of time and Really, time is the biggest enemy of us with these students of trying More. to, yeah, yeah, trying to reach these. They have no concept of Jesus, mm-hmm. and then in that short of time, you want to go from a complete foreigner to a friend to a you know somebody they can trust with the gospel to then a somebody who hears the gospel becomes a believer. It's just time is is so it's, important. It's, yes. Yeah. So we think about Acts one eight going to all the world. Yeah. Really, the world has come to us. So. Oh, it really has. Yeah. I mean, if it's in the middle of the cornfields of Illinois, it's just all the nations are there. It's really throughout the whole U.S. as the world's come to us. And these students have some special needs, don't they? Yeah. I mean, you know, there was one student... Uh, Larissa from Brazil, she was not at the English Corner. That's that student organization where we meet with these students. And she was like, where have you been? She's like, I went to the doctor, and the doctor said, my heart's out of rhythm, so I had to stay at home. And the doctor said, you know, do you have a lot of stress going on? And she's like, I left my country, I left my language, I left my family, I left my job. She was married, her husband was studying, so he would go to school all day, and she was by herself. And she's like, Tyler... I was super stressed out. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and all she really needs is a friend. Mm-hmm. And that's that's really what our family is there to come alongside and to be a friend to these internationals and just love on them, help them with their English, the American culture, and then for those who are curious of faith to come alongside and to be that, that knowledge for them. Wow. 
So it really is being hospitable. Is oh man, that's our that's the main thing. piece of ministry for us. Yeah, like we say, hospitality for us is not a bulletin and an open door. Yes, I mean it is a complete invitation into our life to our our kids. Um, that's the big piece that my wife is in. You know, in, in all this, she is the 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 chef at the home. We do a cooking conversation. You know, she's the the main chef there. She does all the the cleaning, the working, the the loving these students. It's such a a warm environment. Or how my students would say, your your place is so cozy. There you go. And that's what we yes. hear all the time. You know, Tyler, you have such a cozy life. Oh yes. Yeah. So we have to think about the perspective of these students. They're separated from family. Yeah. They can't go home. They're, it's a highly stressful environment, difficult programs. Yeah. And they have to succeed. Correct. Uh, and then they'll be going back to their yeah. to their nation. And so when you invite them over to the home for a meal, uh, it's, it's cozy, as you say. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's also some attraction to you, isn't there? The students kind of attracted to Americans, aren't they? Yeah, that's – and one of the saddest statistics in all this is – like 85% of international students will never step foot inside of an American's home. Mm-hmm. And it's just, you know, kind of, it doesn't make sense when you think of it from the church perspective of mm-hmm. here's all these people who are coming from the nations who have no concept of faith in Christ. I mean, I've asked countless students, like, do you know what grace means? And it's almost every single one of them is like, no, I don't know what, and they just don't have the concept of the teachings of the Christian faith, and yet here are so many people here who are, you know, declare amazing grace. That's their anthem, yeah. and yet they're not connecting this to, they're not inviting this group who do not know that grace into their homes filled with grace mm-hmm. to be able to share the grace of Christ. And so, yeah, that's where our family just comes along, and it's one thing that they're hoping for when they come, you know, that's... I asked these students in a conversation group, what were you hoping when you get on that plane to fly here to study in the, the U.S.? You know, what are you hoping for? And, and so many of them, is like, I'm hoping to make an American friend. I want yes. to have these American experiences. And yet when they come here, and I would do the exact same thing because I'm shy and introvert, mm-hmm. they come to their same people. And yeah. So the Chinese will go with the Chinese, the Brazilians with the Brazilians, and they speak the same language, they like the same food, and they don't really, and the Americans just stay on the outside. And so everybody stays in their separate groups. Mm-hmm. And, and it's very hard to connect. To, yes. yeah. One of the um, saddest events I was at was kind of this quad day kind of thing that we would think of it as the National Convention with the Booths, where everybody mm-hmm. sets up their exhibits. And the English Corner, that student organization I'm a part of, The booth next to us was a Chinese organization, and their whole purpose was how to find an American friend. Wow. And that was their whole organization was just how can these Chinese people find an American friend? Because that's, like you say, that's the attraction. Mm -hmm. That's what they desire so much, and that's what we want to serve in. So I'm driving down the road listening to this podcast right now. Mm -hmm. There's a college in my town. It is very likely there's a fair number of international students, no matter how small your college is. So I want to do something about this. Mm -hmm. I want to fill this void. What is it that I could do as just a regular lay person or a pastor in a church that's uh, got a college close by? uh, What can I do to get involved? Yeah, Eddie, that's what what I like about what we do so much because it transfers over to anybody. And we do three things. We connect, invite, and create. So we connect through this student organization called the English Corner. These students are looking for help with English mm-hmm. and not like what's, you know. A verb or Correct, noun. exactly. They want just, to converse. Yeah, they just want to practice. They know grammar better than I do, but, <laughs> but they just want to practice, you know, their language skills. And so that's the first thing I would say on that university is just to find some organization that you can serve. Just mm-hmm. be the hands and feet. You don't have to start a whole new thing. Just meet with some of those leaders and just say, hey, I just want to be the hands and feet of what you're doing here and just, you know, how can you use me? Just And that's your connection point, just connecting through that need of English and mm-hmm. American culture. All these students have that need. Yes, they have to have English yeah. down. Oh, my goodness. Had yeah, to pass the TOEF and all. Correct. And... To, to study at our universities, and then most of them are from such huge population centers. Anything that sets them apart, 
jobs are so competitive. Yes. And so being able to speak English more fluently is a huge divider in the interview process. Mm -hmm. And so that's a big part for them. So, so they may have no spiritual interest, but they're correct. interested in English. <laughs> correct. And that's your connection. Yeah. They'll and talk to you. Yeah. And then from that, now that I've connected, now I want to invite you into my life. Yes. And so if, I'm, if I like fishing, hey, have you been fishing before? Let's go to the lake. And then as we're going fishing, I'm able to then create a pathway of faith. I'm able to create a conversation around, the, have you been to church before here in America? No. Mm -hmm. What does your family believe back there? Well, this is what we believe. And so we invite, invite, invite to our holidays, our Thanksgiving, our right. Easter. And Excellent. So, we're, so let's walk through that a bit. Yeah. What is an American fisherman like? Well, I can go and I can see and have that experience. Correct. And it's pretty cool, isn't yep. it? Yeah. And then there is no going home for Thanksgiving or Christmas yep. or the breaks. Mm -hmm. So they're either in the library or, yeah, or you invite them over, right? Yeah. Correct. That is that is the key piece to us because mm -hmm. it goes from Tyler's just my you know conversation group leader or facilitator to now Tyler is a friend mm -hmm. and now that I have that trust now when I start creating these conversations of faith there's an involvement there's a it's not just Christianity 101 yeah it's oh this matters this faith matters to the Penn family it matters to Tyler I wonder if it should matter to me yes and so yeah, it really is the game changer, this inviting. And because most of these students, like you said, have to pass a certain level of English yeah. to get into our universities, it's not hard. And I think that's what so many people think, like, well, I could never talk to an international because, you know, we the language is so different. And it's like, you know, most of them, you they could have a, it. Yeah, a very normal conversation, and they would love to have mm -hmm. an American friend, just, just a simple invitation and, you know, it just changes things. And, and we should probably bring up, it's a big deal to for them. They'll probably never forget the people, those events. It's like some of us going on a trip and Correct. we tend to remember a lot of yeah. the things about it because it was an unusual thing for them. Oh, my goodness, yes. We get so many letters from these students and they write about their favorite days in the whole U.S., whether yes. it's visiting New York or San Francisco, and they'll say, Tyler, our favorite days were at your house with yeah. your family. There you and go. And it's just because it's such, just like you say, it's such a a big deal to go to an American's home. Mm -hmm. and, and they're I not, was there. Yeah. And Take not, pictures and such. They're not going to invite themselves. Right. And there's, that's up to us, and that's something they're hoping for, and, and it's, right. yeah, to be a part of an American Thanksgiving. They know this is a big holiday, family holiday. And when they get invited to that, it's special and it's yeah. significant. And so we, we should probably point out sometimes there's cultural differences. Mm -hmm. However, what that tends to mean is they're not going to really assert themselves. Like you said, they're Correct. not going to invite themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's for us to do. For sure. Uh, and wow, what an honor. Mm -hmm. you know. So one other thing to think about is uh, meals are a big deal, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and just the whole experience, even of going to a church, is, mm -hmm. is a pretty big deal too. So, if our folks kind of think that through, how might we do that? How might we try to provide for some of these needs? It's actually just giving them some of your time. Correct, and yeah, just like you're saying with the the meals, you know, just just have a little awareness of of where they're from. Mm -hmm. you know, if they're from a Middle Eastern country or have a Muslim kind of background, then Hey, no don't, pig. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just don't have bacon yeah. as part of your, you know, and that's just a simple, yeah. just take this out of, or just even if you have behind. a multi-group, just make sure you identify the foods and just make it clear that, hey, this has this and this doesn't, so, you know, enjoy. And, yeah. and they know they're coming into your place. Right. You're not going into theirs. And so yeah. they yeah. understand that and just be very, just, just be generous and mm -hmm. authentic and man, it, it comes across. And that's another upfront thing. So yeah. people are like, uh, it's, it's, people are also interested in mm -hmm. what's in food and how a dish is made and oh, yeah, all this kind of thing. Food is so much part of culture. Yes. Yeah. So it's a way of, hey, there's pork in that, <laughs> but yeah, it's yeah. also like, hey, but it's made with pork and such and such. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a... You can't eat that. Oh, you know, correct. That yeah, kind of no, thing. it's just identifying just each dish. Just this is our American food. This is what this is. This is how we do it every yeah. time. That is like when they come over for Easter, it's 
you know, this is green bean casserole. This is it's got know, onions corn dish. and yeah, green is, beans and such exactly. And such. Now, you and Miss Kelly are a little bit different as well because she does some things that are really supportive of the ministry. Oh, for sure, yeah. So you alluded to it a moment ago, mm. the hospitality aspect, but yeah. it also kind of helps financially to keep you guys on the field, so to speak. Yeah, so Kelly, she does. she's had a photography business for you know, 12, 13 years now. And she also now does like a photography conference that her and a business partner run every year. It's a, it's just a very well, you know, done organization. And then she also sells this Monet shampoo. And she's kind of she likes the side hustles of yes. You know, and normally it's just I'm gonna let's say the essential oils. So I'll just sign up so I can get them for free. So yeah. Usually she does enough to get them for free. But but the shampoo business it just kind of exploded under her. And so now she doesn't do nearly as much photography as she used to. Um, but, yeah, what she does there financially allows us to run a bare-bones ministry account that mm-hmm. where we take up, you know, like you're talking about those meals or, yes. you know, the hotels to the churches or the, the gas. Everything is we cover so that we don't have to go out so many Sundays raising support as much. And it just kind of what she does really, you know, like you say, keeps us afloat in our mm-hmm. ministry and that's really entrepreneurial and it's yeah she is she where has we, that in her. Yeah. if you're listening we encourage our folks to think that way it, yeah. it helps us to be a little freer in the ministry and you're able to be there with your people a little more yeah that's that's a good term that what she does for us allows a little more freedom that mm-hmm. That allows us to do what we do. And we should also mention, uh, we've been highlighting the need for pastors uh, Mm and the answer to call to preach. And you are also filling it as the pastor of the church that that you guys are working with. Tell us a bit about how you juggle all that. So currently the Bridge Church, which was started by Pastor Jamie Lee in 2018, and so he's since moved on to Florida. Mm -hmm. And so... Now the question was, what's going to happen with this church? And again, it's a big part of our initiative that we want a community to reach a student, to reach the world. And so we just didn't want the church just to go away. Yes. And so with the Illinois Mission Board, talked with them. They said, Tyler, you know, why don't you go ahead and fulfill the role of the interim pastor till we mm-hmm. can find somebody else to come in. And with COVID, it, it kind of allowed allows me the time Mm -hmm. that right now, this whole year, we've just been meeting through Zoom, online conversations. Our English corner hasn't been in person at all. I see. And and so once that kind of kicks back in, we're really hoping to have somebody to come in as the the next pastor. Right now, I'm able to fill both roles okay because of the time constraints due to COVID. It's going to become much more trickier in the fall. Okay, well, let's, we encourage our listeners to pray about that and mm-hmm. pray that more men will answer the call to preach and pray also for more laborers. Yeah. And because this is an important component, it's a, it's a way of your ministry being different. You're tying them into a local church, and that's also an experience for these students to, yeah. to have and to see and the kind of thing they won't forget and they can take back to their nation. Yeah, we have... Champaign-Urbana has such a unique ability to reach the nations from the Mm cornfields. It's just a really crazy community. It's it's very international. Um, You can just go to the restaurants and see, I mean, Chinese, Korean, Thai, Indian, Middle Eastern. You know, for a 150,000-people-sized community, it really has that possibility of shipping the gospel all across the world just from the cornfields of Illinois. That's great. And so that's what we're excited about, and that's what we're hoping that somebody has that vision of, yeah, I want to pastor a church that can reach the nations yes. and come alongside our family and our ministry where we can partner together and make that happen. That's great. So our listeners, I'm sure, are aware of our 3 for 30 plan mm-hmm. uh, where we're trying to reach, train, and give and emphasize that through uh, the 2020s up till 2030. Mm-hmm. So someone may be listening. Maybe they're called to pastor this church. Yeah. Maybe they have a college that has some proximity to their own church. Mm-hmm. Uh, can take what you're doing, and they can imitate that in their own oh, situation. Yeah. That's what we're hoping so. You know, hoping so for 
this to take place so much. Yes. And that is that this gets reproduced um, from, and it doesn't have to be big state universities. I know, you know, we're one of the number one public universities for international student enrollment. Your university isn't going to have 15,000 students from 100 different nations on its campus. But your community college, yes. your state college, they're going to have, whether it's 12 or whether it's 112 or whether it's 3,000, there's going to be international students there. And they're going to need somebody to come alongside and share them the gospel of Jesus because I can guarantee you a vast majority of them have no clue who Jesus is. Yeah. So we need to embrace that. and. Yeah. Uh, that is not going to go away. You know, yeah. that's a, a money maker for the universities, Correct. if you will. So, yeah. if you have a university, community college in your area, look into ways that you might minister. We encourage people to think about that. Yeah, just connect into the university, invite them. Your church is having a fish fry. Invite them to the fish fry. Meet some of your people. Get your people prepared. That hey, we're going to have some internationals here. Just be very courteous, very nice, and. And then just create those conversations of faith, create those invitations to church, to mm-hmm. Bible studies. And let the Lord do His thing. Exactly. That's yeah. great. Well, thank you, Tyler, for joining us today. And yeah, appreciate it. Thank you all for listening in today. Yeah. So we encourage you to like this uh, podcast, to share it as well, subscribe on YouTube, and remember everything we do. Uh, when we work together, we truly are better together for the cause of Christ.